All right, from Instagram, at Grain Free for Life asks, what do you think about Botox? Um, what do you mean, what do I think about Botox? Uh, yeah, if you like to have a frozen forehead that has no expression, please enjoy it all you want. Botox has been shown to be useful for some people for treating migraines. It has been shown to be useful for treating other neurologic conditions. But remember, it's a slippery slope. And there are package warning directions because of the potential and real side effects of using Botox. So uh, buyer beware. You know, Palm Springs, quite frankly, may be one of the Botox capitals of the world, including here in Southern California. And every time my wife Penny talks about maybe I should get Botox like lots of my friends, uh, we hop in the car and we head to Santa Barbara, which may be the anti-Botox capital of the world. And I tell, show her what normal people look like and uh, that holds her back for a while. So if you, if you want it, uh, just be careful, okay? Uh, from Instagram, at Albin, Albinjas J, how do you rid yourself of insomnia? Well, so insomnia has many, many, many contributions. We know that an abnormal gut microbiome is a big source of insomnia. We know that viewing blue light late into the evening, watching TV screens, watching your phone, watching, reading on a computer are great ways to keep you awake. Uh, eating close to bedtime is a great way to keep you awake. I uh, recently, in the Energy Paradox, wrote about this trick, which is kind of fun to try. Uh, get yourself some glycine capsules. Glycine is an amino acid. Take about three grams of glycine right before you go to bed. Glycine, inter interestingly, drops your body temperature. And strange but true, you have to have a drop in body temperature to induce sleep. That's another thing. Get yourself one of these new cooling mattresses. It really works. Uh, the other thing for some people is get yourself one of the heavy blankets and you know wrap yourself like a toddler in it. Another trick. In other words, eliminate the causes that are keeping you from falling asleep. And in my books, I've got lots of tricks with other supplements for uh, helping you initiate sleep. From Instagram, Jeff Eden asks, what should we do to restore our microbiome post-COVID vaccine? I use your Power Blues, Vital Reds, Polyphenol Olive Oil, Mito X, Total Restore, Vitamin D, and a Vitamin C. Is this sufficient? Well, so, first of all, there's no evidence that, that I can find that I've ever heard about that the COVID vaccines, any of the three that are commercially av available, change your microbiome or destroy your microbiome. Now, catching COVID changes gut permeability. That much has been well shown. But the, the, these vaccines are not going to change your microbiome. Having said that, as I've said over and over and over again, a diverse, healthy microbiome and a intact gut wall is one of your best protections that you have available from preventing viral illnesses, including COVID-19. Uh, but you don't have to worry about if you've gotten the vaccine, uh, getting your microbiome back in order. But a great question. Aaron O'Kelso on Instagram asks, in relation to Aleve ibuprofen being the equivalent of swallowing a hand grenade, for your microbiome, how does prescribed Adderall or Vyvanse sit? Well, first of all, these compounds like Aleve or ibuprofen, 
don't destroy your microbiome. They actually destroy the wall of your gut. And in my upcoming book, you'll actually find out why that happens. And it's a real eye opener. Uh, this is not conjecture. We know why these actually poke large holes in the wall of your gut. Uh, so they don't bother your microbiome, but once you got a leaky gut, once you have a hole in your gut, then even friendly bacteria can become enemies. They can become frenemies, and that's what we want to prevent. Uh, I, I look briefly, there does not seem to be an effect of Ad Adderall on Vyvanse on the gut microbiome, but I'll go back to again saying that there is more and more and more and more evidence that anxiety, depression, ADHD, the gut microbiome, the microbiome gut brain connection uh, is driving a lot of this. And the exciting news is changing your microbiome, giving your microbiome prebiotics that we just talked about a few minutes ago, may be paramount to getting these things under control naturally. And Futut Furuta on Instagram asks, what is the best way to lower triglycerides, especially if it's part of your genetic makeup? Both my husband and I are on the plant paradox. Well, Anne, thank you very much for being on the program. Yes, there is a genetic component of familiar hypertriglyceridemia, but it's incredibly rare. And I have a number of patients who have been told they have that, and they run triglycerides of 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and all of them have come down dramatically by following the Plant Paradox program. Now, uh, I have had the pleasure of having uh, Jim Hector on my program, The Diet Myth from England, and he and I agree that there are some people who are super sensitive to carbohydrates, particularly fructose, fruit sugar, in producing triglycerides. And I've written about this extensively in The Energy Paradox. And people who are super sensitive to sugars and starches, if you want to keep your triglycerides down, you really can't eat very many sugars and starches. I happen to be one of those people. On the other hand, if you're not super sensitive to it, and you can challenge yourself, I've done this before my blood test, then they are not going to be your major problem. But as a starting point, fructose is instantaneously tr changed into triglycerides in your liver. So a great place to start is really either eliminating fructose from your diet, and remember, simple table sugar is half fructose. So getting sugar down lowers triglycerides. Uh, Uday from Instagram asks, what's your morning routine look like? Uh, my morning routine is one of three of my dogs jumping on my head, uh, usually at about 5.30 in the morning and saying, okay, you know, quit ignoring me, uh, let's, let's go. And that involves uh, having some uh, espresso. I have a couple of cups of espresso, uh, black, or I put uh, MCT powder in it. Um, and we'll go into that. We've written about that in all the books. Uh, I don't eat breakfast, as you know. And then I take my three dogs for uh, a hike of about two miles through our neighborhoods. And then I come back and head to work. And as you know, I see patients six days a week, including on the weekends. And I'm here at Gundry MD on Fridays. So that's what my morning routine looks like. Oh, and I... Uh, take a bunch of supplements in the morning and I take a bunch of supplements at night. And as you know, I've listed 
all the supplements I you know, currently take in the longevity paradox for those of you who are interested. From Apple Reviews at uh, Idaho, Lisa. Love, love, love the podcast. Thank you, Idaho, Lisa. My question is, in my early 20s, I had severe ulcerative colitis. Subsequently, I had to have the large intestine removed completely, and they reconstructed my small intestine so that I don't have to have an ostomy bag. Aha, you had a pouch. Uh, can I get three most important tips on energy and eating in my situation? Well, first of all, I want to make sure that you're taking a methyl B12 and putting it under your tongue every morning. Uh, about 1,000 micrograms will do it. If you want to be safe and take 5,000 micrograms, uh, so be it. You uh, most likely don't have a lot of your what's called terminal ileum left or it's been used to make your pouch. And so you won't absorb B12 very well. Uh, you lack intrinsic factor or the absorption of B12 sites. And that's a really easy trick. The good news is, as you know, I take a care of a large number of people who had ulcerative colitis, who don't have it anymore, thanks to the program. You really don't have to, if you're following the Plant Paradox program, you're on the right track. Uh, as you know, we know that some people can get ileitis from these same culprits. So the more you can do to protect your remaining gut, the better. Uh, so feed your gut buddies, they're still critically important to you, and keep up the good work, and I'm glad you follow the program. Uh, at the Healthy School Bus on Instagram, can we use acacia powder as a prebiotic? Absolutely, that's another really great uh, prebiotic. The other thing I think uh, we need to understand that a lot of these gums, like guaur gum, like gum arabic, like acacia, which have been villainized in the past as really, really bad for you. Uh, the tide is turning. These are phenomenal sources of prebiotics. And the more prebiotic fiber I get into you, the ha happier gut buddies are. And the more they will make postbiotics, which will make you happier. Anonymous wrote, you say no wheatgrass, but then recommend eating grass-fed meat. What gives? All right, so um, you and I are not cows. We do not have three stomachs that allow for fermentation of lectins. You and I have not been eating grass ever in our lives. We were not designed to eat grass. There's no evidence of any primate eating grass. And so you were not designed to handle the lectins in grass. On the other hand, a cow or you know, grazing animals have been eating grass for millions and millions and millions and millions of years. They've been designed to detoxify lectins in their three stomachs by fermentation. So if, if you had a stomach that fermented uh, grasses, you could probably get away with grasses. The problem is cows were never designed to be fed corn and soybeans, which have a totally different set of lectins. And sadly, we know that cows do not react well to the lectins in corn and soybeans because they get horrible heartburn. And half of the world's supply of Tums uh, is actually mixed into cattle feed so that they don't get heartburn and they keep eating. So you know, calcium carbonate is in cattle food, so they don't react to those lectins. So the reason you want grass-fed and grass-finished beef is they've got the system to handle those lectins. They've evolved to handle them, and you haven't, sadly. If you found this video helpful, I think you're gonna love this one. So uh, you've got a great doctor who you work with. What, uh, what kind of feedback do you get from other moms who take some of the information you provide or what they've found that works for them? 
and then try to give it to their doctor. Uh, is there a lot of 